Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we find ourselves in the deep, dark, dank dungeon that Chili resides in, where he continues to plead his complete and total innocence to the crimes that he was convicted of, and he wishes to go over the state constitutions of all 50 states and change them to the point where they would actually state no victim, no crime. But Chili, that's not how it's going to work out for you now, is it? So at any rate, guys, let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy watching poor Chili just having... Uh, the worst time of his life. So, today is April 4th, 2024. This is Chile Castro. I'm a journalist giving a report today, and I'm going to report my thoughts and my feelings from the Clark County Detention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. Hello, friends and family, and anybody who listens to my report. I wake up every single morning realizing that I'm an innocent man in a jail. <laughs> oh no, Chili. You filmed your crime. You filmed your obstruction of the police officer. You were charged, tried, and convicted. And according to our justice system, once you've gone through all that, and you have been found guilty and sentenced, you are not innocent. You are now guilty. But of course, I am well aware of the fact that some people who are innocent are uh, convicted anyway. But you were stupid enough to film your crimes, where, on the other hand, these other people who are innocent, well, there was a whole lot of issues that led up to it, a lot of mistakes and everything like that. The only mistake with your uh, trial, uh, Chili, was, well... You filmed it. And that it has to be changed. I believe that every single state constitution should have a statement of fact, a statement of the state constitution that says that if there is no victim, if there is no damages, if there is no assault, then you should not be in jail. You, sh you should not ever have to serve a jail sentence or be put into a jail if there's no victim of a crime and there's no restitution due. Uh, I am well aware of your, uh, well, no victim, no crime mentality. I even covered one of your videos where you actually stated that it should not be illegal to run a red light. But I've got a question for you. If it should not be illegal to run a red light, would the same apply for school buses where uh, there are children on board when they stop and the bus driver puts out their stop sign and uh, reds and everything like that? Are we going to let that happen too, where there's no enforcement of laws on that as well? So in other words, the no victim, no crime mentality would apply and uh, people would run the red lights until somebody does get injured or worse? No, Chili, there has to be consequences for that kind of thing, and so that way it lowers the chances of anybody getting hurt. Now he whines and cries about uh, traffic tickets, uh, driver's licenses, and everything like that. But let's just get to the part where he's talking about what it's like in the dungeon, shall we? So that way he, we can understand where he's coming from and how bad off he is. Every single morning, I open my eyes. And the same thought shoots through my mind like a lightning bolt. I'm an innocent man incarcerated in a dungeon-like system that has policies, procedures, and protocols that if you do not follow them first, you could get sent to the hole. But very first, you'll be locked down to that bunk for 24 hours. You have to stay in that bunk for 24 hours. And if you violate that, if you have to go pee and the guard doesn't see you and you get up to go pee, you go to the hole for at least three to five days, which I've written extensively now about the hole and how absolutely horrible it is. Poor little pathetic, pitiful little excuse for a human being, Chili. Do you realize 
that there are other people on YouTube that have actually gone through higher level prisons than you have ever been in. And the stories they tell are quite different. You should look up Lockdown 23 and 1, J.D. DeLay, uh, Larry Lawton, and the After Prison Show. They've actually been in higher level practical prisons than you have ever been in. And they never talk about having to be locked down in their bed for 24 hours straight. No, they talk about lockdown in a different way where, yeah, you are locked down in your cell, but you get to exercise, you get to do other things like that, as long as you get in your cell. So if anybody's interested in looking up what's actually like on lockdown or in prison or anything like that, getting the truth rather than a bunch of lies from this moron, look up these four uh, guys right here on YouTube. They have some very interesting stories, and while they make jail up in prison, look like it should be not a fun place to be. They certainly don't try to make it look like a total shot at a persecution complex right here, like Chili right here does, as if he's being persecuted. All of these men admit to what they did, and they moved on with their lives. How absolutely horrible the whole is. It's atrocious. It puts fear in your heart. It puts fear in your chest. It puts fear in your soul. That they're going to lock you in this tiny room and lock you in for 23 hours a day. But it just goes back to the simple fact. The state has become a monster against the people. And every single state constitution must be ratified. If there's no victim, then you cannot be put in jail. Period. And it has to happen. It, it absolutely has to happen. Because it could be you. <laughs> You know, I know there's people who relish in the idea that I'm in a dungeon right now. There's people who are happy that I'm locked away. You know, there's going to be sickos in the world no matter what. Until it happens to that sicko. What does James Freeman say? Back the blue until it happens to you. To which I would respond, it's not going to happen to me because I don't go out antagonizing the police. I don't go out antagonizing everybody out in the streets because, well, it's my right to do so. I don't go out to somebody's house and say, uh, no victim, no crime, and therefore go inside and start uh, taking everything that's not nailed down. No, I don't go out committing crimes and making out like I'm a complete victim in the whole thing. In fact, I learned a long time ago, if I wanted somebody to blame for my problems, I blamed myself, worked them out, and uh, ended up getting into better positions as a result of that. That's how you get through life, by taking responsibility and ownership of your own actions, improving upon them, and moving on. And that saying that he created has gone viral, and now everybody says it back the blue until it happens to you. The person I can accredit that to is James Freeman. He's the first person I ever heard say it. It's true. So all the people who are relishing in the idea that I'm in a dungeon, wait until it happens to you or your son or your brother or your mother. Wait until it happens to your lover and they're in a dungeon and there's no victim of any crime. And well, there you go, Chili. There's your problem right there. You're one of your biggest problems. You live in this little bubble. You don't let any ideas in. You don't seem to realize that the majority of people don't go out acting like this. They don't have a persecution complex. They're not a total narcissist. They're not sexist. They're not anything like you are. So they're not going to go out and act like a complete jackass, and think the world owes them something. They didn't pay their child They didn't pay their child support, or they didn't make it to a court date. They locked people up. They, they went to a guy's house here. His, his name is, uh, first name, Eric. We'll call him Eric. That way I'm not giving away anybody's information. Eric. He was working on his construction site. He has a child he pays child support for. He's up to date on his child support payments. He makes them actually weekly. He has weekly child support payments. His, his kid is 13. He's been paying child support for 13 years every single week. Well, he missed the court date when they just were going through and um, renewing, updating, status checking his child support. Well, he missed that court date. So he was at his work at his construction site, 
and they went to his construction site and arrested him from the construction site where he was working, and he's the supervisor, he's the foreman, he's the foremost supervisor in his field, and they arrested him from the site. So just do the money transfer here. Yeah, yeah, Chili, uh, I don't buy that story from you, considering how much you lie. I mean, that sounds like a rather convenient little story right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip to the next section. And then why is it, if you're arrested for a misdemeanor, why do you have to be treated like you're Charlie Manson? Why do you have to be chained and shackled? And why do you have to sleep in a metal bed? And why do you get a fork, a plastic fork? Or when you're in the hole, you just get a cardboard spoon that you fold up. It's like taking a piece of paper and making a U out of it. Imagine taking a piece of cardboard and bending the edges so you made a, a U shape, and then the tip of it sticks out, and that's what you have to eat out of in the hole, this little wooden that's not being treated like Charles Manson. That's just the standard fare of being in jail. It's not a paradise. It's not a place of comfort, you nitwit. Now, Charles Manson was put into uh, lockdown for the majority of his uh, stay in prison until he died. And that was for his own damn protection because there were people in prison that wanted to kill him. So you're pretty much going apples to oranges here, dude. False equivalency fallacy, considering that Charles Manson was a special case. As you guys know, I just got three implants put into my gums, and if I'm in here for six months, all the implants will be destroyed. My gums may be destroyed. So... <sighs> I'm sorry I just get on here and I rant and I rave and I just say things, but it's just true. It's just true, you know, and it's, the things I'm saying are 100% truthful and they're wrong. They're, I, I'm not. It's, the things you're saying are 100% truthful. Uh, yeah, so why are you in prison? Uh, could it be that you uh, filmed your crimes and lied on the stand about them? Uh, gee, I don't know. Could that be it? I mean, come on now, Chili. Uh, be truthful for the once in your life. Well, now, I am getting tired of hearing Chili's voice, and I'm sure many of you are, too. So, there was one other thing I want to uh, cover before I call it on this one. And this is about Chili's uh, channel as far as its uh, monetary gains go. Here is how it looked on the day that his uh, trial occurred. Now, here's how it looks right now on Social Blade. Yeah, there's been quite a drop in, uh, well, his income forecast right there. If this continues for over the next six months, yeah, I really don't think that his channel will survive. He might make a comeback at some point, but... It would be very, very difficult for him to do so. So given this significant of a drop in his uh, monetization, uh, yeah, the chances of survival on his channel are growing dimmer and dimmer by the day. So at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's- Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that?